Okay, um, this is a, a follow-up of this uh, Logic Excel Instrument video that I did uh, quite some time ago. It's actually uh, around about a year ago. Um, and I had a lot of responses on this. Um, some people managed to get so far, uh, some people didn't manage to, um, to get it to work at all. Um, and I wasn't really too sure how to address those issues until I got myself a new Mac and I realized that, um, that there were a couple of places where things could go wrong. And so this is the video that's really the follow-on to the Logic External Instrument video um, to explain how, how to do this right from, from scratch. Um, so hopefully you'll find this useful. If not, um, respond to the second video and, and, and try and give me um, some insights as to exactly what it is you're doing wrong. Now before you even start, you must connect your external synthesizer's um, audio output to the audio input on your Mac. Now all synthesizers are different and even a lot of the Macs now are different. Um, so you need to figure that one out for yourself. I'll, maybe I'll post another video to show you how to do that on my setup. Um, but you should be able to do, figure that out. You also need to make sure, obviously, that the volume on your um, external synthesizer is turned up on the appropriate output, um, otherwise it's not going to work, and that you've got the appropriate cables, which really should be uh, a line-out to line-in. You shouldn't be using anything else. It should be a simple uh, line-out to, to line-in, no, nothing else. If you're using a USB, um, Firewire, or any other kind of audio device, this may not work. It may be slightly different. So this is just a very basic tutorial. Okay. So the first thing that you should check is the audio MIDI setup. Um, and you just type in audio into Spotlight, um, which I just did just there. And it's an audio MIDI set, setup um, application. Um, and here you'll see built-in microphone, built-in input, built-in output, um, and aggregate device. Um, now the aggregate device is really um, just a combination of, of other inputs. So if you have three or four or five different inputs, you can create an aggregate device. And, and I might do a tutorial about that sometime. The only reason I have this selected is because um, I'm creating this video and I need to, uh, to be able to record both the microphone, which you can hear, and the built-in sound input, which we're going to use um, later on. Um, just to prove this thing, this whole thing's working. But you should probably pick the built-in input. And all you do is you highlight it, and here just say, use this device for sound input. Um, by default, usually the microphone's uh, selected, um, but that's, that's not what you want. You want to use the built-in inputs. This is the line in. Um, or if you want to create an aggregate device, you can do that, and you just basically select the devices that you want to use as, as audio inputs. Uh, but you want to make sure this built-in input is selected. On your built-in input, you should have it set up pretty much like this. Um, if you have hardware converters, just leave that to automatic. Um, leave the format in 44.1. You can obviously change that to 48 or 96 if you're doing high-quality recording, but just for the purposes of this demo, um, we, we don't need that. Uh, and here you should have these set more or less in the middle, the value of 0.5 and the decibels of, of 0 because we don't really need this thing boosting any more than it's, um, than it's, than it's boosted. Um, as long as you have the volume set on your synthesizer to uh, you know, around about midway on your output. So once you've got this set up, the next thing to do is uh, launch Logic, um, which I'm going to do now. And I'm not going to use any presets, I'm just going to say open a new empty project. So we're doing this right from the start. And what I want to do is create a software instrument. Okay, and we're going to create that. Uh, and we have here instrument one. Now before we do anything else, we need to go to the logic preferences and go to audio. Now this is, I think, where some of you may have been going wrong before um, and I didn't really talk about before. This device here must say built-in input. If it says built-in microphone, no matter what you have set up in your uh, audio devices here, Logic will ignore it and override it. So have this built-in input here. Um, there's also uh, some settings here for you know, a buffer uh, because it is going to treat it as though it's audio coming in and it's going to process it on the fly. Um, so if you don't have a very powerful machine, you should probably select this to a little bit higher and you'll get a little bit of a delay. But the default here is 256, uh, it, it should be fine. You'll want software monitoring input so that you can actually um, you, you can 
uh, monitor the sound that's coming in. So this is how you, how you should have your core audio. If that's set up correctly, you've got the built-in input here, then you're ready to go. Now, on this instrument one, and we've gone through this before, you basically select an external instrument. You can select mono or stereo. If you've got an old mono analog synth, you should probably select mono. For my purposes, I'm going to select stereo um, because I have a stereo instrument connected to this machine. Now, the MIDI destination, just for the time being, we're going to select MIDI graphics input notes. And for the input, we're going to say input 1, 2. And I'm not going to change the input volume. Now, I pretty much have um, my synthesizer connected to Logic. And I should be able to hear the notes that I'm playing. So I'm just going to give that a quick try. And there you can see that it uh, pretty much works perfectly. Uh, and really that's it from the, um, from the synth input point of view. Now, you can do a lot of things with this. Obviously, you can record this in two different ways. Um, fundamentally, I mean, there, there, are, there are many combinations in Logic, as you know. Um, but one way to do it is to record it as MIDI. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an external MIDI track, um, which has gone immediately to um, a GM device, that's a general MIDI device. I'm going to select it to my MIDI input, which is this UM1 interface that I have between Logic and um, um, my Mac. And uh, I'm going to select channel 1. And now you can just hit record and uh, and record exactly what it is that you want to well, what you want to record like this. If you play that back, you should get the recording that, um, that you made. Another way, which would be completely different, would be to um, create an audio track. So now you can create an audio track, um, say you want a stereo input, uh, and create an input track basically, and, and monitor and record enable the track. Now this is obviously going to create an audio track um, which is a little bit different to monitoring live, and I'm not going to do that because at the moment I've got too many inputs and we get a lot of feedback, um, but that's the way that we uh, that we would do it if we if we were going to uh, work that way. So that's pretty much it. That is exactly how you create an external instrument uh, in Logic, and uh, and really it's pretty straightforward. And once you've done it, you can you know start assigning um, MIDI um, track numbers to your um, internal instruments. If you've got a multi timbral synthesizer, then you can create multi track recordings um, live. Uh, if you haven't got a multi temporal synthesizer, then you could just layer them down as audio tracks. Um, and I will do another follow-up tutorial that will show you exactly how to, to layer um, audio in that way and, and come up with a, with a track. But there's probably, a better, there's probably better tutorials and better people out there to, to you know, help you create an audio track, um, but this is exactly how you create an external instrument in Logic. Leave some comments.